tomato ketchup, we put it on so many things and there are some really popular brands out there. So why would we want to make it ourselves? If we get five different people to make five different hamburgers and we put the same condiments on there, those hamburgers are going to taste the same. So if you want your hamburger or anything else that you put ketchup on to stand out from the crowd, you should make your own ketchup. It's not hard to do. I usually do it in a large batch and it freezes and stores in the fridge for a really long time. I started making this ketchup 14 years ago and over time I've developed the recipe into what we have before us here today. And so I'm going to go through it and it's pretty simple. We're basically going to put all of these things in a pot and we're going to simmer it and then we're going to put it through a blender. And then after that, I'm going to just freeze most of it and leave some in the fridge. It has a really long shelf life because it has a lot of vinegar and sugar in it. We're going to start by adding a can. This is a very large can of crushed tomatoes. You can use whole tomatoes or even fresh tomatoes with this, but if you do that, you may have to reduce it on the stove longer. If you use these crushed tomatoes, they are already quite thick, so you're going to end up with a very thick um, ketchup, which is what we mostly desire. So in goes my tomatoes. Next, I have about a cup of tomato paste that I'm going to put right in here. I have two whole onions that I chopped up fairly like medium dice and I just sweated those out in a frying pan to uh, make them a little softer. Those are going in just like that. I have about a cup and a half of sugar here. That's going in next. This is a half a cup of canola oil. You could use grapeseed oil or any other sort of neutral oil. Here I have one cup of pitted dried prunes that I have soaked in hot water just to soften them up a bit and the water. Now I have a cup and a half of vinegar. This is cider vinegar, but you can use white vinegar, red wine vinegar, whatever vinegar you have on hand. And it goes. Soy sauce. This is two tablespoons of soy sauce. Two tablespoons of molasses. Three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. Three tablespoons of salt. Two tablespoons of black pepper. One tablespoon of garlic powder. Two tablespoons of allspice, one tablespoon of nutmeg. I've also got a cup and a half of red wine. If you don't want to put the red wine in there, you don't have to. Next, I have a pinch of cayenne pepper, six bay leaves. Uh, you want to keep track of those because we're going to take those out before we grind this up in the blender. Just going to mix this up a bit. Now, I'm going to put this on the stove and I'm just going to let it simmer for probably 45 minutes. If you're interested in this recipe and would like to see more recipes like this, feel free to subscribe and hit the like button. I have the ketchup on low heat and I'm going to stir it often to make sure I do not burn it. The last thing I want to do is burn this ketchup. About 45 minutes later and I've taken this off the stove. I'm going to remove our bay leaf and get that out of the way. And then I'm just going to grind this up in my blender. So whenever you're grinding up hot liquids, they're really volatile, so you want to be careful. Make sure you have a lid. All the safety precautions are in full effect. Just going to fill this about halfway up. If I overfill it, I might get some sort of a volcano. And shower of burning hot ketchup all over me. It has happened in the past, so I know better now. Turn this on. They want to blend it to really smooth. Mm -hmm. the lid off, and it's quite thick, as you can see here. And I'm just going to continue this process until I blend it up the whole batch. It's all blended up, and it's gorgeous. I will admit it smells fantastic. It smells like steaming ketchup. Lots of vinegar clears the sinuses. At this point in time, it just came out of the blender, so it has a lot of air in it. So I usually let it sit for a while, like say 20 minutes, to let those air bubbles come out. And then from there, I would judge if it's too thick. If you think it's too thick, I think this is lovely, uh, you would just add water until it gets to the consistency that you want. So if it's too thick, add water. If it's too thin at this point, 
put it back on the stove and reduce it for a while and watch that the bottom doesn't scorch. This is a big batch. I'll put the recipe at the end of the video or down below. I'll make another version of it that's for about the quarter of the size of this. This makes about six liters or six quarts of ketchup, which is quite a bit. But like I said, it freezes really well and it can stay in the fridge for a very long period of time. It's very stable. You can also take this and convert some of it into barbecue sauce. Just add some paprika, some cayenne, and you would have a barbecue sauce. I store my ketchup in deli containers, maybe this size, if it's gonna be a busy week or if I go through a lot of it, say in the summer. Uh, and if I just want smaller amounts, I'll just do this. So this will make about six of these larger containers and probably 12 of those. So you could just pop one of these in the fridge and it would last in there as long as regular ketchup does, which is pretty much forever. And, or you could put it in the freezer where it will basically last forever. You could also take this at this point and you could put it in mason jars and hot water bath it and then it's shelf stable at room temperature for in perpetuity. If you're a prepper and you're waiting for the apocalypse and you want to have some ketchup for the apocalypse, stores really well.